In this video, I want to show you how to UV unwrap and bake textures in Blender and then import those into Unity. We're going to do that for a couple reasons. One, I think it looks a whole lot better. And two, it's going to allow us to reduce the number of materials that we have in Unity. And so just like in the last video where I reduced the number of game objects before importing to Unity, if I can reduce the number of materials, Unity's happier still. The fewer materials that the rendering engine has to deal with when you're playing your game, the happier and faster it's going to run. So if that sounds interesting, let's get started. So before we get into the nitty gritty, I want to show you what I've got set up. So this is the same file that I was working on in the previous Blender video. On the left, I've got a low poly tree. This is the original tree. It's in lots of different chunks. On the one in the middle here, this is the one that we've joined and all the modifiers have been applied. There's no modifiers acting on individual objects. Then if I go over to Unity, you can see that I've saved that blend file in the Unity project. You can see the two trees here. You can also see the camera and the lights that are present in uh, the Blender scene. Okay, so let's get down to the nitty gritty here of what we need to do. First thing we need to do is we need to open up a few new windows. Now this was, uh, I think, maybe a little bit easier to do in the old versions of Blender. So the first thing I want to do is open up two new windows. One is going to edit the shader or the nodes and the other one is going to have the UV map or the UV unwrapping in it. So I'm gonna come down here. Uh, it's a little hard to get to you. So when my mouse looks like that with the two arrows, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna split the area. And this is gonna let me choose where I wanna split it. Split like that. And then I'm gonna to come to this one here, right click, split area. And I'm gonna split this one in half. Then the one on the top, this is gonna be the shader editor. The one on the bottom is gonna be the UV editor like so. So the next thing we need to do is UV unwrap this object. And if you're new to this idea, basically what we're going to do is we're going to take all the polygons on this tree and spread them out on a flat surface so that we can map a texture to it. So basically we'll have a PNG file with all the colors and the computer can look up on that PNG with U and V coordinates, what color it should be displaying at that given pixel in Unity. So with the tree selected, I'm going to press tab to go into edit. And then I'm going to press A to make sure that I've got all the vertices selected. Then I'm going to come down to the UV menu. And then I'm going to choose the light map pack. Now, I really like this approach to UV unwrapping for low poly models. If you're doing something more sophisticated, something more realistic, this is probably not the best way to do it. But for low poly models, this works great. And what this is going to do is take all the polygons and the computer is going to figure out how to arrange them to fill up the space as accurately or as completely as possible. That way we get the highest resolution, the best looking texture that we can for a given size. So I'm going to click on that. And then we've got some options here. We've got image size. Uh, and again, this is uh, the bigger you have it, the longer it's going to take to bake eventually. It's also going to take uh, up more space, more memory when you're running your game. I think for my purposes, I'm going to go to 1024. Again, best if your image size is a power of two for Unity. Unity is going to be a lot happier. And then the pack quality. This is effectively how long the computer takes and thinks to uh, figure out how to get all the pieces to fit so you can maximize the amount of space taken up by the polygons, or in other words, minimize the amount of wasted space in the texture. This goes, for, I believe, from zero, it goes up to 48. Now, if you have a really complex model, you got to be careful with how high you set this. Uh, it can take several minutes to unwrap a large terrain or a large building. In this case, because I have a really simple tree, I'm going to go all the way up to 48. And then this margin, this is basically uh, how much space is between the various polygons. I find the default a little small. So if you go up to 0.13 or even 0.16, that really prevents any kind of bleeding of colors from one polygon to the other. I'm going to press OK. And over here in my UV editing window, I'm going to go to new and I'm just going to call this branched tree texture. And I want to make sure it's kind of the same size as what I did and press OK. And when I do that, you can now see all the, all the polygons from the tree have been flattened and mapped onto this texture. So that's the part of UV unwrapping. We've done that. We've done the UV unwrapping. Now, one thing to know that's different here in Blender 2.8 is we no longer have the Blender renderer. Now, that was my preferred way of uh, baking low poly models in older versions of Blender. It wasn't the fanciest, but it got the job done and it looked good enough. That no longer is part of Blender 2.8. So we're going to be using the Cycles engine, which is why we needed the shader or the node editor in the top left. 
But before we can bake this, we're gonna to need to add something to each of the materials. So I'm gonna go over to my material tab. So I've selected my leaf material. Now, if you're doing this with a more complex model, you're gonna to have to do what I'm doing here with each of the materials in your uh, object. So I'm gonna come over here to the editor. I'm gonna press Shift A to add and then search. And I'm gonna type in image. And I wanna add in the image texture. I'm gonna zoom in there a little bit so you can see a little bit better of what's going on. And then I need to tell it what image texture to use. And I'm gonna choose the texture that I just created, that branched tree texture. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over with my trunk. I'm gonna select the same image because we're gonna be baking both materials onto the same texture, onto the same PNG file. Now, if you don't do that, you're gonna get a warning uh, about something about a missing texture or a missing image. It's pretty opaque. It's pretty hard to figure out what they mean. This is what they're talking about. So I wanna share a couple settings here in the materials before we move on to the baking that I like to use to make it look a little bit better. This is totally personal preference, but I wanna show you a few of the settings that I like to adjust. Now I've imported this model from an older version of Blender. I think that's why I'm seeing this option here of use nodes. If you're seeing this, you wanna click that and it brings down all these options. And here you can change this shader. In my experience, the principled uh, BSDF is the one that I want. Now for me, I don't like low poly stuff that's shiny. So I'm gonna turn down the specular. Come down here to the emission and I'm gonna change this so it emits a little bit of color. And I'm gonna select the same color as the base color, but then I'm gonna turn it down a bunch, something like that. And what that does, what that does is that effectively makes uh, all the faces emit a little bit of color and it makes any sort of dark crevices or dark shadows a lot less prevalent and not as obvious. So I'm gonna repeat that process with the leaves as well. So with the material set, I'm gonna go up to this tab right here, which looks a little bit like the back of a camera. I'm gonna click on that. Now we need to make sure that the renders engine is in cycles. By default, it should start in the EV render engine, but we wanna make sure that we're in the cycles render engine. If you're in the EV render engine, you won't be able to bake. There will be no bake option. So we've got to be in the cycles engine. So if you go down, you can see this bake option down here. There's a bunch of bake types here. And for the most part, the combined option is the most important one or the one it's gonna bring in most of the detail into a single texture. Now, if you wanna break it down uh, into smaller chunks, you can do that and there may be reasons to do that. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it at combined. So I'm gonna press bake and this is gonna take a little while. You can see that there is a progress bar at the bottom. It's no longer the top of Blender and Blender 2.8 is now at the bottom. And with the Cycles engine, this is gonna take a little while even with a fairly simple model like my tree. So when that gets done, we'll be able to see the results on the bottom left. And I'll fast forward this and I'll get back to you when it's done. Okay, so there we go, the baking's done. Now if I go back into edit mode, you can see that all the polygons of the faces are lined up and you can see on the texture that each polygon has its own color and there's some different textures going on. There's some lighting, there's some shade. It's a little bit more interesting than just the truly flat shaded low poly style. So we've got the UV unwrapping done, we've got the baking done. We're gonna take one further step to help optimize what we're doing and make it run a little bit smoother in Unity. So I'm gonna go back to object mode and I'm gonna duplicate this tree one more time and I'm gonna slide it over here. And this is the process that I use. This is kind of a workflow that I use in a lot of my uh, Blender projects here. I will have three models. I'll have one that's the raw original model. I'll have one that's combined with no modifiers and then I'm gonna have a third. And on this third one, what I'm gonna do is remove the materials. And then I'm gonna add in a new material. I'm gonna call it uh, branched tree, like so. And the reason I'm doing this is because now, because I have all my color material mapped to my texture, mapped to this PNG file, I don't really need individual materials in Unity to represent those different colors. I just need one material. And so again, if you have three or four trees, not a big deal. But if you have maybe 20, 50 or 100 different models in your Unity scene and they all have four or five or 10 different materials, 
that can be a real performance hit. So with that done, I'm gonna save this file. And again, remember this file is saved into my Unity project. And you can see down here on the image, there's an asterisk there. I need to save this image as well. This PNG file, this texture does not get saved as part of the project. So I'm going to save as, just like I did before, I'm gonna to navigate to my Unity project and drop this into the assets folder. With that done, I'm gonna move over to Unity. It's gonna think a little bit. And you'll notice what's happened now. I now have a third tree here in my Unity scene, as well as here is that texture that we baked before. So I'm then going to right click, create a new material, and I'm gonna call this branched tree. And then in that branch tree on the Albedo channel, I'm gonna drag in the texture that we baked in Blender. I'm gonna turn the smoothness down because I don't really like the smoothness. And then I'm gonna drag this onto that tree. Now you'll notice that the tree is pretty bright. It's really kind of shiny almost. And what I often find is I need to turn down the Albedo color. I'm gonna turn it down like so. And now already I think that looks better. It's softened it up, it's looking a little bit better. You may have to adjust the colors a little bit to get to look just like you want, but I think that's already looking far better than the other two trees. So let's go a step further. I'm gonna turn on the emission and I'm gonna drag in the branch tree texture into there again. And you'll see again, it gets super bright. So we're gonna turn that color down. And what this does, if I turn it all the way off, you can see that the shadows are really dark. And if I turn this emission on just a little bit, I lighten up those shadows. I think it looks a lot better. So there you go. I've shown you how to unwrap and bake textures in Blender and import those into Unity. I hope that was interesting and better yet, I hope it was useful for you in your game development projects. If it was, think about hitting that like or subscribe button. If you wanna go even further in supporting the channel, check out the links to my Patreon and Discord server in the video description below. Until next time, happy game designing.